So, I mean, here's what is so memorable about – well, one of the many things that's so memorable about this game is, you know, we had – this was my junior year, Hank, Dontrell, Mike Mahorick, Ryan Cook. I mean, some of the players that have come to this program all their senior year. And so there was so much hype going into the season about the talent level that we had and, and all the expectations. And so it, you kind of got to start the very first game of the year, which was against UNLV. I think we played on a Monday, like a Monday afternoon, and it was like 100 degrees out there. And we beat UNLV, and we go into Missouri, and Brad Smith, the quarterback of Missouri, um, I think, Hank, you didn't you play with him? You, I, mean, I know you played against him, but you got to know him in the NFL. But – I mean, he was the number one ranked dual threat quarterback in the country. And, don't and their forget, offense was – what? what's that? Don't forget, they had two first, uh, first team preseason All-Americans in the secondary. Yeah. Uh, one, one, one first team, one second team, and then they had a first team preseason All-American linebacker. And, and, and they had a – I remember there was a defense lineman that we game-planned away from. But, I mean, we, we were going in this game into a Big 12 territory – um, I mean, legit football atmosphere. And this team was, you know, highly touted. There was a lot of hype around them with their offense and Brad Smith, but their defense was legit. And their defense yeah. was, I mean, and I remember our coaches, you know, talking about how fast they were side to side and the guys in the secondary. And so we knew going into this game that, you know, we were going to have to match them. I, I mean, we, we had confidence in our, our defense. But we knew that we were going to have to put up some numbers um, from an offensive standpoint. And so there was just – I remember there being a ton of hype, don't you, Hank? A ton of hype going into this game. Coming off of the way we started in that UNLV game, um, the pressure was on because we finally – we started the season uh, matching the expectations of what, what were put upon us. You know, as he mentioned, you got a lot of seniors in there that have been through a lot, a lot of tough times. Um, and uh, especially for the New Mexico seniors, you know, we all talked in high school about wanting to change, change New Mexico football in general. And that's why we all ended up staying there. And so to go into the Big 12, you hear all the hype. They got the All-Americans. We'll never have All-Americans, yada, yada, yada. It was like we were basically walking in, you know, with our hands tied behind our back and our shoes tied is basically what they, they – like we were going to be uh, in the shooting gallery. And they were going to have their way with us. So. And then there was a lot of comments going out before that, you know, coming from Missouri about what they're going to do to us. All they got to do is stop Dontrell. And I remember uh, Cole yeah. and I took it personally because they straight up said, all we got to do is stop their running back. If they put guys in the box, then we can't throw, we can't do this. Um, so we took a lot of that. We, we kept on to that. We held on to that one because we, they, yeah, they and- could say we we're nobodies. Yeah, absolutely. And plus, it was, a, it was a brand new offense. We were running a brand new offense that was a little bit more spread out. Um, it had gone away from, you know, more of the kind of pro style and I went to the, you know. Um, I don't know uh, style. <laughs> the what? I don't know style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, it was some sort of hybrid from, uh, from Utah and Alex Smith and you know there's it was a hybrid of a lot of different things but because the year before is when they went crazy with that offense so right right, everybody right. started doing the Utah offense right right exactly but <laughs> I will never forget <laughs> I will never forget what was uh, how hot it was and how humid it was right it was so humid that we warmed up like all of our warm-ups were, were without shoulder pads you remember that Oh, and it was, it was the coaches brutal. were the coaches were terrified that uh, it was too hot and humid for us. You know, we're in New Mexico. We don't have no humidity now. You come to New Mexico, you got to worry about the altitude. Yeah. But that humidity was something. That, I remember just sweating, sweating. So, but but yeah. going it, go ahead, go. I was just gonna say, like, tell tell everybody what was working so well for us because I mean, there, there were a lot of things. You're right, they. They had to stop Dontrell, right? They were like, Dontrell's the, the, the only way they can beat us. And so we, we came out that first series, and um, they had the box stacked. They had at least one more guy in the box block every single play. So I don't just think back, man, on what, you know, what, what were you doing that was so well? Because they had that All-American on you. 
Um, first off, like you're talking about, we came out at the start of the game, and I think it was you that sent me the link, and I've watched that multiple times. I, I won't even close that in my browser. <laughs> right. um, I think it was the first three plays of the game. We came out and passed, and they didn't know what was going on, and we were getting some yards. But then after that, uh, here's something for you, Frank. Um, there were countless times in the huddle, no matter what the play was coming in, Cole would grab me by the face mask and just say, get open. And I'm like, but it's not, it's not, it's not coming then, my way. Just get that open. That happened a lot. All right. That happened a lot. Yeah. 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 There was, there was a lot of times, but um, I think we just carried over the momentum from the week before. Cause like, I think what against UNLV the week before, I think I had 165 yards. I think it was like 165 yards the week before. And that, you know, hybrid, whatchamacallit offense that we threw together was uh kind of working. I think it relieved a lot of pressure off of Dontrell because everyone used to yeah. stack the box because we were mostly coming out one tight end, two wide receivers. And it was hard on Cole and Dontrell on our offensive line because everyone knew what we were going to do. And everybody knew when we were going to pass the year before. So we yeah. kind of spread it out, even though, I mean, tell me if I'm wrong here, Cole. Even though we had more receivers out there, Cole still grabbing by the face mask saying, get open. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I think that we just – we had a chip on our shoulders. You know, you don't really want to have a chip on your shoulder because that means whoever you're going against has an advantage against you and you're already playing out, trying to do more than you normally would. And we just went out there. Coming from us, man, we had nothing to lose. We were supposed to get right. spanked 50 to nothing. We weren't supposed right. to score. And we just started slinging it. and. The All America was following me. Then they started doubling with the safety, but somehow I kept getting open. And I'll tell you what: if you go back and watch that video, Frank, you watch those throws that Cole was doing. I mean, there's that fade in the end zone, like literally couldn't have been any better. He dropped that right on the sideline, perfect. And there was, uh, there was another uh, throw, and I can't remember which quarter it was, but I uh, ran a hook, and Cole got pressured and started scrambling to his left. And I separated, and it was a diving catch, but the way that he threw it, there was no one – I mean, we were clicking on all cylinders. Um, yeah, it, it was Don, one of those Don games. Don threw a touchdown that game. Yeah, Don Trell threw a touchdown to you. It was one of those games <laughs> where, dude, like, it was um, – like, everything was just kind of working, right? Everything was working. I mean, the, the coverage they were showing us, um, you, you were beating that, that guy every single time on the ball. But it was one of those games where, and you don't have them often, but every athlete does have them where you just know what you're doing is going to work. And that was part of the, hey, get open, because I knew you could beat, you showed like in the first couple of series, you could beat that guy. And if I just put it up in the air, you, I mean, it, it gave an incredible chance for you to go get a play, you know, go get the ball, make a play. And it just kept happening. And, and it's almost like they were in denial the entire game that, that <laughs> this guy from New Mexico just was beating their All-American corner over and over and over again. And th they just refused to change it. And then they finally did. And it was too late. And it was still got open, you know. But it was, I mean, having 85,000 Big 12 fans screaming and their cannon going off every time they score, right? And Brad Smith running all over the place. And we had 400, maybe 400 Lobo fans all in red, up in the top corner of the nosebleed section, and you couldn't hear. I mean, it was deafening because of the, the, the Murray fans. And the best part about this entire game, the most memorable thing is after we kicked that last field goal, and we go up by 10, game's over, we're celebrating, we're talking about how fun the plane ride's going to be. Like, I mean, we're, we're, we're making a statement. All you could hear in that entire stadium, and I, I know you remember this too, Hank, was our 400 level of fans. It was dead quiet in an 80,000 fan stadium in the Big 12 football. All you could hear was 400 Lobo fans in the top corner screaming their heads off. It was awesome. I it will was never basically, forget that moment. Hey, it was literally like a light switch. Bam. Yeah. Just quiet. Once we went up, it was, uh, it was, it was over. And it felt so good seeing all those fans that were supposed to come out and watch us just get yeah. all, up, all up and down the field start trucking out start leaving because there was a point where we got up by quite a bit and they started leaving early because we weren't slowing down the only time that we were stopped really was when we stopped or so like there's one play that makes me so i should have had 250 yards that game 
there was a deep post that went right off my hands. And then to add insult to injury, my face just hit the hit that turf. And I remember I'm hitting the ground. I just remember like, man, I don't know where I'm at. I dropped that one. I watched that one. I saw that video. I was so mad. So mad at yeah, that pass. I, I had not um, – I hadn't realized how much we went back and forth in that game no, until I, I rewatched it. And, I mean, Brad Smith was a baller. He was hey, legit. He remember, was, was so good. I and remember I, talking and, and we had to sideline. match him every time. It was, it was incredible. It was like a Peyton Manning-Tom Brady uh, battle. You have to keep up scoring. And I remember talking on the sideline. We were just sitting there. I, I remember this. Brad Wright, what do you think they're going to call next? Brad left. That's all it was. Right. He would take two steps, take two steps to the left or right, and then run. That's literally <laughs> all it was. Dude was crazy elusive, and he was, like I said, got to know him when we played in the NFL. Great dude, and just as elusive, man.